starting out and for several months, if not a year, we may be at a very low uh, rate of flow into the sewer. And I, it's, it's difficult for, for me to calculate how, how much that may, may be for you, too. Uh, well, one, one of the things that would happen is we would have a flow meter uh, you know, on, on our uh, waste stream that we have. So, uh, you know, we, we would be monitored on what we're putting into the system. And, uh, you know, as time goes on and as hopefully as our business increase, you know, you know, we keep up with the, you know, the fee that we're actually uh, using. Jeff and Donna, do we even have a situation set where we can charge accordingly? You know, I mean, for example, are you going to do, let's say, uh, 10,000 gallons a week right now? Next month, it might be 20,000 <laughs> gallons a week. And as it progresses, how can we change it? Do we have to do it by the charge to the rates, or do we have to do, we can't do the rates? Mm -hmm. the rates stay flat. What we could do is, okay. They'll make an initial payment on the connection fee based on whatever they say it's going to be 4,000 gallons a day to start out. And every January, we'll look at it. And in January, let's say of next year, they're up to 10,000 gallons a day. We'll take an extra, you know, that's 6,000 gallons that they haven't paid for, then we'll charge them for that, connect, that part of the connection. I don't know that that's how the ordinance is written. It had to be amended. Yeah. Well, we're going to charge them a connection fee based on their use, what they say they're going to be using a week. Right, but it's a connection fee, so they're paying that when they're connected. So their use is 20,000 gallons a week in connection, and six months down the road now it's 40,000 gallons a day. But the fee <laughs> goes for the connection fee, not the usage can, I believe can the way you, the ordinance is written now, it's based on their connection, not not a year down the road. I don't know that we're going to make that adjustment. Well, you know, if I start out one type of business and progresses into something else along the same line, and I need more capacity, I'm sure that the wastewater people are going to charge me more money. Right. Other than just the use of the processing. Because now I've exceeded what I paid for on the original tap line. Mr. Mayor, I wouldn't have any objection at all of having an incremental like that. I don't know whether it could be done through your ordinance or not, but uh, Jeff did bring up a very good point. That look at it each January and see what our fee would be up to as a normal daily usage or normal weekly usage. Uh, I just want to do it in a fair way and, and be fair to, the, to everybody concerned. Uh, I, I just am at a loss as to how we can do this. So, What's the connection fee for twenty thousand gallons? Well, twenty thousand. We do it by basic. Uh, twenty thousand gallons a week. You have to divide that by six, five because it, it, we base it on daily flow. Okay. Four thousand gallons. Four thousand gallons. Eleven thousand six hundred twelve dollars. That's a significant amount. Questions sure. in regards to possible environmental impact. Is there any odor from that we will emanate? We have to address this. Yes, sir. We, we have to address odor problems. Uh, naturally, when you bring a truck in and you empty, you're, you're going to cause a little odor. And we've got in this facility, and that's one reason we chose this facility, it's got a negative air flow where it used to be a car dealership and they always plugged in the exhaust and ran it through a filter. Well, we could actually increase this filter size into a charcoal filter, have a negative airflow, and have our trucks empty, and our, have everything going on inside the building. Any air that would come through would have to run through this filter. We know all about odor, and uh, that would be our, our one of our major concerns is odor. We don't want to be a bad neighbor. Did you say there are some other businesses? In a uh, neighborhood that is just east of there? Yes, Delta Fawcett is there. Uh, uh, Rush has got a list of these. I'm more concerned about the neighborhood that's uh, yeah. northeast of there. I talked to, um, I, don't, I don't know if I have 
a gentleman's car with me that is the building right next door. And um, um, he's the vice president of sales, Alan McKellar. And I went over and talked to him and explained what we were going to do because he is the closest building in proximity to that uh, site. Uh, Delta is across the, all the offices and everything is down the street. Uh, directly on the other side is storage buildings. Uh, there's a, a building behind us that there's nobody in, and then there's another one that sits in behind these guys. Uh, and when I discussed this with him and told him what we wanted to do, uh, he explained that he knew about the air filters and filtration systems and things, and I explained that. Uh, we would use, more than likely, use carbon filters in our system. And uh, as he was asking me a lot of questions about filters and things, and, and when I told him that, he said, that's the, that's the answer I was looking for. So he, you know, he doesn't have a problem at all with us being there. And what my concern is that there is a uh, bar that serves food, I believe. I don't know, I haven't been in there. The Knights of Columbus uh, sits closely by, and I, I know that they serve uh, food there in right. a good one situation where a uh, bad aroma is going to affect those types of businesses. <coughs> and, you know, that's, that's one of the concerns that we have and one of the things that we have addressed and, and looked at very carefully. We, we uh, purchased our dewatering equipment some time ago and we have a lot of systems. There's a lot of different air filtration systems uh, but carbon is it's the best thing that you can use. It removes all the odors and uh, you know, things that go through the building. And, and like uh, Jerry explained, the, uh, the dealership already has a fossil flow system inside, like a lambda flow system that we can set up inside the building so that uh, you know, there's everything that comes in goes through the system and out. And we would do that, everything that, inside. That street that is east of the business is between business drill up in that and storage buildings. Mm -hmm. Is that road able to handle the weight of the vehicles coming in? Yeah. There's semis that go down that road all the time. Our trucks don't weigh any more. Actually, probably weigh less. You get more six and seven. No, no, the side streets all the way. Yeah, that runs down. Yeah. 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 We could come directly off of 46 because there's an entrance. Right. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, no, that, that's not a problem at all. Is uh, the back half of that building is rented out right now, and there are semis that come in and out of that place. You know, uh, your concern is is, is just uh, if we can't be a good neighbor, we're going to be run out of town real quick. And uh, we understand odor is a problem. We don't want it, and we don't want anybody complaining about odor problems. It's not everything possible to not have that situation, but uh, it, it's something we need to address. Well, I feel like there's already a one particular problem that we're, we're dealing with, and I don't want to know. Okay. You mind if I ask what that might be? I, I will say that. Okay. All right. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, any questions, Mr. Mayor? You know, uh, Jeff, I, I do for Jeff. Jeff, do you have any comments or concerns or questions? I know that it's changed a little bit since what we originally spoke about. No, uh, the only concern would be uh, okay, if we do decide to go to like 4,000 gallons a day or the connection be, then we probably need to have something written up that every January we're going to revisit this for a little while for the next couple, three or four years. And if it increases up to 40, uh, you know, higher rate, I can get that connection to be. Uh, the other, the other thing is, I, uh, as far as the border works, I don't know if that, the, the property they're talking about is not in city limits. So, it's two it's, blocks out. It's two blocks outside of city limits. Right. It's the old Al Reynolds property. I, mean, I didn't know if, you know, we do have provisions where it's a waiver of annexation of basic or states that if we ever decide to go out you know, to, to annex this area, that you wouldn't find any fight annexation, but also gives uh, 
I believe the city some jurors.